but I may join in at some point. Uh, I'll give the word to the rest of the participants and speakers who will be um, generally leading the webinar tonight. So thank you and uh, enjoy your evening. Thank you too, Peter, um, for enlightening us about the Bulgarian Biodiversity Foundation. And without further ado, let me introduce you to our speakers this evening. Um, first, we have uh, Zero Waste, then EcoSwitch, and lastly, the AUBG alumna, Katarina. Um, after the presentations, we're going to have a discussion round, so stay tuned for that. And we also have a little surprise for you at the end. And now, before we start with the presentations, I would like to ask every each one of you to rate yourself um, how sustainable your life is at the moment. And if you're brave enough, you can um, turn on your camera and show with your fingers, rate yourself from one to 10 of how sustainable you are. And if not, you can write it in the chat as well. Um, for example, for me, I would rate myself six. But I mean, sustainability is a long journey. And I think that for everyone that, that values as well. I think that for most of us, as I can see, there is room pro for improvement, but I'm excited to see that we have, we have a good average, which is above five. Okay. And now um, we're also going to ask you to tell us what um, what you have you already achieved in sustainability in your life. And for that, we're going to quickly share a link in the chat. You can um, go to it now, later, or during the webinar and write whatever you have already achieved as a goal to be more sustainable in your life, um, what think you can improve on, and just share your thoughts and um, your goals for now. And now for the most exciting part, let's start with the presentations. Uh, first on our schedule, as I said, we have Zero Waste. It is a non-governmental organization and tonight it's represented by Anna Kovacheva and Mikhail Komu. Um, now they're going to tell us more about what the NGO does. Um, they will talk about waste and plastic problems and the five principles of a zero waste lifestyle. I'm giving the floor to you now. Hello. Thank you. I'm going to quickly share my presentation. I think you can, you should make me a host so I can share. You are a host, uh, so you should be able to share it. Ah, now I can. All right, let me know if you can see it. Yes, hello to everyone. My name is Misho and me and Tani today, we're going to present you the Zero Waste uh, um, Foundation. Uh, we are, uh, as Anna said, we are non-governmental -government, organization. We start uh, our organization Two years ago, we start uh, based uh, around a couple of friends. Uh, to, today, um, we are an organization with uh, more than 30 volunteers uh, who participate in, uh, in our uh, uh, in all of our uh, community-based uh, um, educational program uh, programs uh, for. Uh, Part of our mission is uh, to educate people uh, how to reduce waste and how to live more sustainable, sustainably um, following the five principles of uh, waste. Um, today, uh, we, already, uh, we, we can proudly say that uh, we have a couple of uh, um, uh, challenges and a couple of uh, programs that were uh, let, let's say in, in some way uh, uh, successful. Uh, for instance, it's uh, our last uh, challenge for the past year. It was uh, it was called uh, 2020 Zero Waste Challenge, where we we show and uh, we present people with uh, 
tips and with uh, advices how to live more sustainability in uh, different uh, areas in their life. For instance, in their uh, uh, how to be more sustainable and live uh, zero waste at your work, uh, at your uh, hobbies, and how to how, how to reduce uh, the waste of your life. The the base um, principle today that brought us all together it uh, it's the problem about the the waste and the trash, which is everywhere. Uh, as we as we saw um, two weeks ago, for instance, this is the Isker Dam, and this is a great patch of uh, plastic waste which is in our rivers, uh, in our uh, reservoirs. And uh, this problem is uh, going to be addressed uh, from us tonight because uh, one of the, the big challenges uh, in, um, in how to create more sustainable uh, way of living is uh, to find out uh, a, a way with simple changes in our life, how to prevent that. For instance, we all saw uh, the great um, and the great plastic patch in, in uh, the garbage patch in uh, Pacific Ocean, which is uh, with the territory of 1.6 million square kilometers. It's, for instance, this is uh, around um, well, 15 times bigger than the territory of our country. And uh, this is uh, one of the problems that we are facing. And this is one of the, the um, the reasons we we made this uh, organization uh, to educate people uh, how to, to to be more sustainable, how to live with uh, with less uh, 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 waste, with less plastic, for, as we, we see on the, the slide. Uh, that that's that, that's one of the problem that we are addressing right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, we all know that uh, plastic is uh, very cheap, it's easy to use, it's long lasting, it's very comfortable. Uh, unfortunately, using it so widely uh, costs a lot to the environment and uh, to our health. That is why we have prepared for you a few facts um, regarding plastic. Uh, so, um, uh, so that uh, to represent uh, uh, that using excessive amounts of plastic could actually be a problem. And why is it so? So uh, let me uh, test. Uh, what do you think? Uh, how many percent of plastic ever produced has been recycled? Okay, this is uh, only 9%. Uh, and let me say that from these 9%, only two are actually uh, transforming um, um, into the same uh, product that it was before. So if you have had a plastic bowl, you can make only 2% of them actually a plastic bottle again, depending on the material. What about a water bottle? How many years does it take to decompose? Okay. On average, that is uh, around 600 years. Um, and depending on the um, material, it could be a little less. The problem is that it doesn't biodegrade. Uh, what that means is it actually decomposes on very small microplastics, but they stay in the environment because the microorganisms on Earth cannot recognize it and cannot dissolve it and decompose these small particles uh, to disappear. So they stay in the environment, they go with our food, uh, they become food for sea animals and so on, uh, which unfortunately also uh, at some point reaches us as consumers. So how many credit cards worth of plastic do you think that the person consume in a year on average? 
recent studies actually show that uh, this is uh, 12. So one plastic credit card um, we consume with very small, invisible for our eyes particles with um, consuming drinks in plastic or just eating, um, for example, seafood. Uh, what about plastic bags? How many, uh, how much time on average do you use a plastic bag? Okay, this is on average 12 minutes. Uh, of course, calculate it the time that you buy something in the store, you put it in a plastic bag and then you go home. You uh, usually use it only for about 12 minutes. Uh, this is the production of plastic in million tons. Uh, so as you can see in the last 15 years, uh, it uh, has rapidly uh, increased. So for the last 15 years, um, more than half of plastic ever produced is produced. Um, I don't want to be so negative because plastic could be useful. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, household items that uh, are actually long lasting and we use them many times. So um, about a quarter of uh, the plastic produced are useful items. And of course, indispensable or necessary um, plastic that uh, is uh, usually used to produce um, phones, uh, computer hardware, uh, of course, also medical equipment. Uh, half of it, though, is single-use plastic that we already mentioned that could easily be avoided. So here is how. Here, here is how our five principles, uh, the zero waste philosophy are pure on five principles, uh, all start I think with, with the letter R, as you uh, see on your uh, screens. The first principle is the most important principle when you begin uh, your zero waste uh, lifestyle. This is uh, the principle of refuse. This is the power of us as consumers and, uh, and as people to, to refuse to buy products uh, which are going to create more and uh, waste and uh, going to uh, to be part of the problem. For instance, all of us, uh, I believe, uh, here in our webinar uh, are doing uh, parts of these principles but in their, um, their life and they didn't realize it. For instance, when you have a bottle for, a, um, you have a metal bottle or a bottle which is for multi-purpose, you're refusing to a single use plastic as uh, water bottles. We can all refuse uh, in our uh, to to buy uh, to consume more products which are going to create more uh, waste, which are going to be um, to be thrown away after the first use or of just a couple of days. Uh, the second principle is uh, it's called to reduce. How uh, this is the way how we can reduce using uh, uh, when we cannot uh, refuse uh, products, we can re reduce the use of uh, this uh, um, this uh, necessary for our life. Uh, uh, present, for instance, we can uh, we can start uh, buying on a, on, a, on a big packages when we're supposed to, for instance, uh, to, to make our grocery store. We can uh, reduce uh, our travel with with cars or with uh, with planes to to, to to minimize our carbon footprint. We can also uh, reduce uh, using. Uh, uh, single uh, uh, single use plastics uh, in our life, and the, the, the third principle it's called reuse or 
and some uh, some use it as repair. This is uh, when a product uh, from our uh, uh, product from our wife uh, can uh, have another um, another use. For instance, we, we can use uh, jars from uh, food uh, to store some uh, particles, uh, in, uh, or we, we can uh, repair our uh, broken uh, or uh, tear up uh, quotes or broken. Uh, uh, broken sorry uh, uh, objects uh, you know from our day-to-day uh, -day work the, the five principles are going to continue with the recycle which is uh, Anna is going to present it to you but uh, for, for me because she's going to close the, the lecture the most important thing is not to uh, remember all the, the principles at once but just to start uh, start using them uh, or start using one one by one at your day-to-day uh, -day life and that's why in our website zero waste bulgaria you can find how to start uh, living with a zero waste uh, lifestyle today mm -hmm. uh, and uh, while you try to refuse um, the things that you don't necessarily need, reduce the things that you need and reuse wherever possible. Recycle is uh, one principle that everybody of us, I hope, already doing. In some countries, you're obliged to do it. Uh, but recycle is indeed still important because uh, it is preventing waste going directly to the landfill. Um, just as a comparison, um, I will uh, share with you that uh, glass and metal can be recycled multiple times. Uh, what is more, a metal can, um, uh, which uh, is produced from an old can, saves up to 96% of the energy. So, Recycle, you know, the uh, colorful containers. It's really important and uh, you can easily do it. Uh, rot, uh, by rot, we mean uh, composting food waste. But this is another very big, interesting lecture that uh, maybe uh, you can organize in the future. But also very, very important. So um, uh, to sum up regarding the, the principles, they are basically grouped in, uh, in two categories. Uh, the first three are focused on preventing waste or think how to prefer sustainably um, sustainable uh, materials or how to um, uh, make your everyday choice so that you can uh, prevent on the first place producing the waste and uh, the other two are disposing it properly uh, as i said be considerate when you deal with the waste that you couldn't avoid uh, so that we prevent it from going directly to the landfill and with that, uh, I want to thanks for listen, uh, thank you for listening to us and uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. As uh, Michelle mentioned, we have a lot of interesting tips and tricks how to get started and articles on our website. And of course, if you are interested in uh, joining us, uh, joining our group of volunteers, you're welcome to contact us. Thank you. Thank you to Anna Mikhail for the interesting presentation. We learned some new facts about waste and plastic, and this way we can make some wiser choices in the future. Uh, our next speakers are Anna and Stoicho, the founders of EcoSwitch, uh, a brand that offers sustainable products. Now they will talk about product alternatives in our everyday life and the power that we have as consumers to make more sustainable choices. The floor is yours. Hi, hi everyone. Hey, hey everyone. Thanks Just... for having us. We're um, so happy to be part of this event. We just need to take control of the sharing option. 
Yep, and while we are fighting here with, with Zoom, just like to say that we are really excited to be here. It's always inspiring and satisfying to have so many uh, people come together and discuss such ideas. Uh, so thanks again for the invite. And now I think that we are ready to go. I hope that you can see our screen. Yes, we're here. Yeah, we, we've decided to present ourselves with exactly this picture because um, it describes um, a big part of our mindset of what we are and the reason why we founded EcoSwitch in, in the first place. We love to travel and we love nature. This is a place called Lago de Verde, which we found on the Canary Island a few years ago when <laughs> we were still able to travel. You can see this beautiful green lake on the left, left which meets the blue ocean, Atlantic Ocean on the right. And, this realization of, of having this beautiful nature, which we depend on, is what came us to uh, create EcoSwitch because we are really seeing the devastating impact of plastic pollution that um, is uh, taking uh, what we have in common away from us. And initially, we, we thought of EcoSwitch to be this uh, kind of uh, platform where we raise awareness about plastic pollution and we talk about this uh, really important issue of, uh, of nowadays. Uh, however, as we were kind of brainstorming our ideas and thinking of what we can do and how to do it, we decided that it, uh, it will be beneficial also to provide uh, solutions, right? And to provide alternatives to, uh, to single-use plastic. And, and as we were going along with it, one second. It goes backwards. <laughs> Sorry, our presentation went backwards. So let me go to the right one. And as we were going along with our idea to what to do and how to do it, we decided that we should have a, uh, a business, right? And that's how we came up with our online store. And as you can see, we've come a long way with, uh, with our logo here, uh, but Generally speaking, sustainability is a broad term, right? It has many aspects to it. So on one hand, you have food waste. On other hand, you have energy deficiencies. You have plastic pollution and etc. So that's why we decided that for us, it will be really important to have a focus. And our focus currently is really single-use plastic. Speaking of uh, single-use plastic, um, have you... Have you ever thought about this? This is a, a, a favorite uh, quote, not a quote, but actually a fact for us, which we read a few years ago in a book and it was uh, uh, awakening, eye-opening for us. We are manufacturing a single use product from a material which stays forever. It's unbreakable um, as, um, uh, Anna mentioned it. It doesn't. It doesn't compose um, natural organisms. Just don't uh, eat it as it happen will happen. For example, with uh, the peel of your apple, if you just throw it away um, on the ground, uh, it doesn't break. It just becomes into smaller and smaller pieces of um, plastic. And it's and it's absurd the situation that we just throw uh, things so quickly, which are uh, made from a long-lasting material. And even though the situation now is kind of sounding dark, we, we firmly believe that uh, actually we can do something about it and we should do something about it. And uh, we believe that we as consumers actually have the power to drive that change for the better. Because we as consumers actually we have uh, even much more power than we, uh, than we might realize initially. So uh, we decided that we would like to share tonight with you some uh, products which we have been using in our daily lives because for the past two years, we've been really on a journey on this sustainability uh, journey. And we have this experience both from consumer point of view, but also from a business point of view. And we decided that it will be, um, it might be beneficial and hopefully uh, it will be inspiring and we will give you some tips and tricks on, on what we, we are actually doing and what we are we are using as, as products. So we would like to show you some of our, um, of our everyday products, which are actually alternatives uh, to plastic, which we believe that you might find um, interesting. But 
uh, we decided that we don't really want to do it in a presentation, but rather we'll, we'll try and show it to you Great live time. here on the camera. This will be kind of like, uh, so I'll stop sharing my screen now so that you can see it. One second. Okay. And this is kind of a world premiere now because we haven't really done it on Zoom. So let's let's try first time it. ever. So we've picked, as Terchi mentioned, a few of our favorite products. Some of them we have it on their um, on our store. Some of them are just uh, favorite products that we use daily. First are these. Uh, I'm hope uh, hoping you see it. It's a bamboo toothbrush, and these are toothpaste tablets. We really like them because they involved a bit of rethinking of the conventional products we, we use. So why, why having these uh, pastes and liquid, um, liquid products which come into huge plastic uh, bottles and tubes that are not recyclable even? Uh, well, we can have them in solid forms. Uh, um, you can probably agree with me that uh, the bathroom is a huge generator uh, of single-use plastic. And we have um, a lot of other solid alternative. This is a hard shampoo. Uh, over, um, over time, we have uh, seen um, rest of the other products like conditioners and uh, hair products which come in uh, solid forms. And this is quite clever because you save uh, the packaging. Um, and you avoid a lot of waste by just going to uh, a solid product. Uh, we've also um, noticed that um, cleaning products are becoming quite widespread, N not in Bulgaria yet, unfortunately, but um, we've seen them in many online stores. Uh, products, cleaning products, which are in solid uh, form, again, in tablets or uh, sachets, which you can uh, just buy and uh, mix with your tap water at home and prepare the product yourself. And uh, you are saving uh, packaging and you are buying the product, which is the most valuable, valuable thing after all. You can just refill and uh, use what is uh, actually important. The truth is that those companies are transporting water rather than uh, any detergents or cleaning products because they comprise only a small percentage of the whole thing. So we're uh, emitting a lot of CO2 emissions just to transport water and these clever brands are um, offering refillable options. It's a bit hard to find, it, find them uh, so far in Bulgaria, but with a little bit of research, you can find them there uh, saving like tons of um, negative uh, impact and they're very handy. Yeah, and what I would like to mention here is that we, we don't want to just list some products for you, but just to give you ideas and would like to mention that it's really important to know that these are actually products which are now and you can do a bit of research and find them and use them because they're, they're smart alternatives to what we have currently as common products. And for example, as NS Zero Waste also mentioned, Glass can be eternally recycled and plastic is rather being downcycled and you can do it just several times, which is not really, really an option. So these products are already out there and you can find them for yourself and just find what suits, uh, suits best your needs. But uh, speaking of inno inno innovative products, I wanted to show you uh, this one. I hope that you are able to see it. So this one was manufactured by uh, cool Danish brand called Last uh, Object. Uh, we, are, we are very happy to, uh, to be partnering with them. And I would like to show you this because it's kind of interesting thing. Uh, it's actually a Q-tip, which is reusable. And once you use it, then you can just wash it with a little bit of soap uh, and, use, and use it as much as up to a thousand times. So what's really uh, key here about this product is that it's reusable, but also from consumer's point of view, it's quite convenient. So uh, you can take it whatever you want with you um, and uh, wherever you want with you. And it's, and it's really cool. But we wanted to show you one, uh, one photo. So I would like to uh, quickly share my screen very quickly. Hope that I don't mess things up. And uh, yeah, hope that you can see it because it's 
it's kind of important. Last year we took part in this uh, beach cleanup. So this is uh, this is on the Black Sea shore. Uh, we were doing the beach cleanup and we noticed that actually there are so many Q-tips there. Uh, so these are cotton swabs, as you can see here. The cotton is is already gone because it's uh, it, it degrades. Had, it's, yeah, it degrades, but the plastic stems are still there. So it was quite uh, eye-opening for us to see this on the beach that actually you have so many uh, cotton swabs which eventually end up on on the beach, uh, and it's it's there. You can you can see it, and once you kind of touch it with your, your fingers, it's, it kind of changes your perspective. And that is why I really wanted to, to show this product because it's, it's innovative uh, and it just rethinks that single use mindset, which we uh, all have uh, and we are just throwing away stuff, but that is kind of the impact that uh, in the end is, uh, is being taken by, uh, by nature. Yeah, it was quite, uh, quite strange to um, realize that these uh, stems are one of the, the most common um, litter we, we found on the beach and it, it goes uh, it goes through the sewage system through rivers and it ends up uh, in, uh, in the water at seas and oceans. Although we are not thinking that many people would throw their uh, cotton swaps in the toilet, but it's obviously happening. Uh, we also prepared a few other products from the same brand. They are calling them last tissues and last rounds because yeah, the aim is to take one and let it be your last one. Because as um, Anna and Michal uh, mentioned, it's quite important principle to reuse. These uh, ladies will understand me are uh, cotton facial pads used for cleaning face and um, um, removing makeup. They're again made from cotton and wood and are very similar uh, like feeling uh, compared to the conventional ones, but can be reused. They can be even washed in uh, the washing machine and used a thousand times. Uh, these are very interesting. We, we have found them recently. We've never seen uh, anything similar a few months ago. These are uh, handkerchiefs, the good old handkerchiefs from cotton which we used to carry in our own pockets maybe 20 years ago, but we conveniently forgot about and starting using all of these paper tissues. Um, uh, you can take a clean one, use it and put it on top where uh, you store the dirty ones. And you avoid a lot of um, single use um, paper ones which leads to another serious issue, which is deforestation, because again, we are using it for seconds uh, and throwing them too quickly. Um, a cool product. Um, and we have prepared one, which is not that um, innovative, doesn't include much design. It's quite basic and everyday one. This is uh, a cotton bag, shopping cotton bag. But what's special about it is that it has eternal, eternal pockets. Not sure if you can see, but um, it saves not only the shopping bag, but actually you can uh, avoid picking many of those uh, single um, plastic bags that people usually use to store their uh, produce. Um, in the beginning, uh, it was, uh, actually hard for us to uh, keep in mind that we need to carry it and always uh, use it. But um, for example, we, we've decided to uh, hang it on the door uh, every time we, we are at home after shopping. So we never forget to uh, get it on the second day. We keep one in the car. So we reuse two uh, bags as much as possible. Yeah, that's that's really uh, the key here, really reusing as much as possible what you already have, because uh, really the point is not to buy reusable uh, products and then just buy a stock of them. For example, you don't really need five reusable bottles or coffee cups. So yeah. it's this, the essence here is this kind of building a habit and to make it easy for you. So for us, it works to hang the, uh, the back on the door handle and as we are going out we just don't forget it but just take it with us and it's always there and we're using it as much as possible um, so it's a really important point because 
at the end, we don't want to end up with a lot of reusable bottles, uh, reusable products, sorry. Just find what works best for you because there are, for example, a lot of cases in which actually you don't really need a product at all. And uh, I'm sharing my screen again because I wanted to show you this, uh, these bananas here in a plastic bag, which really kind of annoys me, to be honest, uh, when I see it in, in supermarkets because it's, it's really not needed. For that purpose, nature has already done uh, its part. The, the banana has its own peels, so it's, it's perfectly fine. And at the same time, you, for that, you don't need a cloth bath, you don't need a black bag, you don't need a plastic bag, you don't need anything. So think about uh, situations in which you can actually not use a product at all. And that is kind of the, uh, the reduced principle which uh, already is waste. Uh, mentioned about. So it's, uh, it's important to, to have this uh, in mind when kind of thinking about sustainability. It's not only about having cool products and- uh, Or using any, any or... alternative whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Simply avoid. Another good example, uh, it, which uh, we usually um, get as a question on our pages, Guys, please tell me a uh, biodegradable, compostable, eco-friendly, blah, 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 bag for uh, collecting trash. And our answer is actually you don't need a bag. Yeah, it, the bin gets dirty, but it's after all a good effect and we can live with that, don't we? Um, we just picked uh, a bin which has a handle so we can easily carry it to the, the street bin and directly throw it without using any bags and we must have saved like I don't know thousands so far because as Deutsch mentioned we can simply avoid any any alternatives and using no products to be uh, sustainable. And uh, last but not least I would like to show you this for me it's really important product and it's actually a detachable straw you can see it it's kind of a pocket size one so you can take everywhere with you and you can do it like that. So now you kind of have the full on uh, metal straw. Now, why is this an important product? It's normally we get two arguments about it. And one is that plastic straws are way too small. They don't really cause that much of an environment issue. Uh, they are bigger things that you should worry about and so on and so forth. And the, another one, and the other one is that when you go to a bar or a restaurant and you refuse which is also one of the zero waste principles, you refuse the plastic straw, then they are saying, okay, you are refusing it, but actually, but actually the plastic straw is already there. So the bar has purchased it. Uh, and if you don't take it, then the next one in line will take it. But really what people seem to be underestimating is the message that this product is conveying because the message here is pretty powerful for me. It's, it's really going to a business, whether it's a bar, restaurant or whatever, and saying, no, I don't actually want any unnecessary plastic in my life. So, and it's also a really good conversation starter because every time you pull out a metal straw, people start Absolutely. asking you about it. And it's kind of- <laughs> They're so curious to, to see what is that? <laughs> yeah, it's curious and, and then the, the the discussion goes in that direction of plastic pollution. And we go back to that plus, uh, awareness about plastic pollution because talking about it uh, to, to friends, to colleagues, to everyone is also important because uh, that's how people can get really into, into doing uh, actions and taking part in, in all of this. So this is why lastly, we wanted to show you also uh, the metal straw. Yeah, so coming back, to, to what uh, we uh, showed you as a favorite part of us. As, as consumers, we have the power of, of just conveying this message. It's not, not only about reducing our footprint on one hand, but also just spreading the message so businesses and governments at some point can hear uh, the trend, can hear the most of the people who want uh, sustainable change so we can drive this systematic change we need to see in the world. And it's worth mentioning that leading a sustainable way of living could get a bit overwhelming maybe at times. There, there, you have to build new habits, you have to think about stuff, uh, but really it's not about being perfect. Uh, it's essentially about 
taking the necessary small steps, small steps which will eventually lead to that systematic change, which we all, of course, want to have in, in the world. So our advice is just don't be hard on yourself, uh, do the little things, um, and uh, knowing that you are taking the steps in the right direction is, is always good. So please try to um, kind of think about this. So what can we refuse? What can we reduce? And what can we uh, do instead of uh, what we are doing at the moment? And, uh, and this is really, I think, uh, I think powerful and little steps can go really a long way. I think that this is, this is this pretty, pretty much, much, this is pretty much it from, from us. I hope that we haven't really uh, take much of your time. So um, let's, uh, let's leave it to the, to the next speakers. I will do what I have to do now. Okay, well, thank you so much for that, Anna and Stoicho. That was very inspiring, and I'm sure that everyone got inspired with some ideas, with some sustainable changes that they can make. Now, to give the floor to Katarina, she is an AUBG alumni, and uh, she's going to talk about sustainable habits and changes that we can implement as students on campus, hopefully when we are actually all on campus, but otherwise as well at home. The floor is yours. Uh, hello, hello, thank you. Do I just need one more second to... Uh, While you're getting ready, I already see that there are amazing ideas that you shared uh, on the mural. I'm going to remind you to that. If you have anything else on your mind that you would like to share, how, how do you sustain the planet, how um, what have you already achieved in sustainability? Uh, I will actually go ahead and, and start because, um, yeah, I was having some uh, issues with my screen, but now it seems uh, better. Um, and I have prepared today um, a presentation that is focused on, on uh, the campus um, with some examples related to the LBG campus, but also can be maybe, uh, yeah, more uh, broadly applied. And I wanted to start by having a few minutes break first to, um, yeah, after all this information, we, we heard that it was very useful. I think it's also a good moment to take uh, a few uh, breaths and um, yeah, uh, get also more um, ready for some different, more di different uh, types of advice, let's say. Uh, and I would uh, like to ask you to, for a moment, close your eyes and, or look away in a distance and take a, a deeper breath and just notice how do you feel in this moment in your body and um, try to see if you feel comfortable, do you feel any tension maybe, or just check in with yourself today um, if you're doing it also for the first time. And when you notice this, um, yeah, how, how your body feels and going from your head into your body more. I would like to ask you to try to imagine this energy and um, yeah, how your body feels as if it was um, a living plant, a tree. So whatever images may come to your mind when you imagine your body as a tree, no matter how tall or short, um, old or a young one and yeah, maybe a pine tree or an apple tree. And just to see how it looks. Is it fully vital and healthy? Um, are the branches strong or some are not so strong? And just observe it and without judgment. And then try to make this tree look a little bit, try to help it a bit, try to take care of it by giving it some healthy soil beneath. So breathe in and breathing out, also offer some fresh water 
to your tree and some fresh air around and also a lot of bright sunshine rays on, on your tree that will help it maybe blossom or just grow to its full, full potential. And take one more deep breath. You can also exhale out one. And also notice how does your body feel now? Do you feel more grounded and centered? Do you feel like your energy can also move like and, and blossom in the in right way, like the tree you just imagined? And then slowly open your eyes. And coming back, welcome maybe any changes you experienced. And I want you to, uh, to think about um, how taking care of yourself is also a way of sustain sustaining life and on this planet and also sustainability in general. Um, we are not so different from a plant such as tree um, because we all need the same things to nourish. We need healthy ecosystems in order to really live in our full potential. And when we take care of ourselves, we also help to take care of the nature and others in our environment. And that also works the other way. So when we take care of the nature and the others, that helps us to, to take care of ourselves. And with this in mind, uh, we, we see that sustain, sustainable living is not a to-do list, it is a journey. Uh, it is an ongoing process. And this is how I see it from my own experience um, up until now. And what also made a lot of uh, sense to me is, is to, for tonight to try to make, categorize it in a few themes that I considered um, very important and, and relevant. And those are waste footprint, food and well-being and regenerative life. And uh, my um, fellow speakers, they, uh, with the, with we have been speaking so far, was, is connecting to the waste footprint. And yeah, this is the most, I'd say, the almost obvious one. We see our uh, actions very instantly. So you, you can spot a plastic cup in, on the field of uh, in the field or on the lawn it's it's very very visible and um, there are a few things that we that can already be done at the uh, Skaptopara campus that um, you can start doing even tomorrow which is first uh, thing is the recycling as as I'm aware there are recycling bins in every dorm um, building and uh, this is, let's say, the way to do a little, little effort after using a, uh, and disposing the product. And the next step is reusing, uh, choosing reusable products that uh, Stoicho and Anna already showed some great examples. And um, this is also uh, helping the environment, but also helping us in, um, Focusing our energy on what matters in life and not constantly thinking, oh, yeah, this, this is disposable product is something I depend on. I ran out of cotton pads. I ran out of uh, earbuds. I, I, I just think it's well, not to mention the plastic bottles that we constantly, yeah, well, when I was a student, I, I remember every, almost everybody was buying one uh, a day. So imagine, yeah, it's, it's a huge amount of uh, plastic bottles on campus. And um, another thing is that this approach can be applied to, to almost every activity that we, that students do on the campus. And uh, some of like on top of my head uh, are also connected to printing. So printing only when it's necessary, when we need to 
hand out uh, some uh, essays or exams and um, also try to uh, place the food and drinks in reusable products such as the water bottle and uh, food containers in the canteen instead of taking the plastic ones that are already there um, and uh, of course using the a text, a text uh, cotton based uh, bag preferably when shopping and um, I think this is also quite a popular trend at ABG using like buying the bags in Kaufland or Bila while you can actually bring your own bag to the store. And um, yeah, these are the, the most, let's say the um, lower hanging fruits. And in the next section, um, I will talk about food mainly as in my opinion, it is one of a really big, big chunks uh, that contribute to climate emissions. And um, food systems are really interlinked with everything else in our environment, including climate, but also ourselves. Agriculture, as we know today, industrial agriculture, um, has really so many negative impacts uh, on the soil, on the wildlife. And you can see here the quote um, that I put from the recent Chatham House report on biodiversity and food systems that 86% of species that are at the risk of extinction are threatened mainly by, by agriculture. And that is because of the yeah, less, less land for the species. And um, industrial agriculture is driven by the food demand, which is really great, uh, huge, in, especially in the Western part of the world. Uh, and the food demand is additionally uh, ex exaggerated by the food that we waste. So I read also somewhere that 30% of the food that we buy is wasted. And um, this is um, even gets more ridiculous uh, as overeating almost comes close to the amount of the food that is being wasted. So in the end, some of us overeat uh, what we buy and other, others throw away. So um, these are the, the trends that are really even more pushing uh, the and making the agricultural producers intensify their production. And uh, what is also even more troubling is the meat industry and the livestock because the, uh, the, the this interesting fact that 94% of all uh, mammals and animals on planet Earth at the moment are livestock animals, like cows, pigs, chickens, and only 6% are those living in their natural habitats. And that for me was a really, really uh, mind blowing uh, fact. And um, there's, um, it's unimaginable how much we can do if we just eat more plant-based and with less meat. Um, eating meat daily uh, is not uh, a scientific recommendation, it's, it's a belief that people have. And um, it is not essential um, to keeping healthy. And there are many scientific studies also showing that eating plant-based more is good for you. And so I think, um, that is a very, very good step towards a more conscious life as well. Transitioning to a plant-based diet doesn't mean completely ex excluding meat, but it can be uh, putting meat, for example, to 25% of the plate two times a week. That, that is also a good step. So um, many people get very triggered by when somebody talks about their food, but there is also a way to do compliments for that. And um, on the other um, point regarding overeating, um, eating consciously in a conscious way in a peaceful environment, chewing the food and also not multitasking while eating helps um, us understand when we're full and when our food is digested, like what we eat can be really digested. That's really important because we don't want to overeat, not only because of the food uh, that we waste, but also because it doesn't do any good to us to eat more than, um, yeah, th that food sits in the stomach and 
it's not really doesn't do good to our body. And um, in in total, the food that is um, well for my memory as a student at AUBG, I remember I didn't really pay much attention to to what I was uh, eating, um, in the sense I was vegetarian back then as well, but I, um, I, I, for example, didn't also think so much that how important it is actually to understand also the source of food. And I think Bulgaria has still a lot of small farmers that uh, produce food in a much better way and sustainable than uh, industri large industrial uh, producers. So it's also nice to support your local uh, farmers from Blago, go to the market, buy some fresh stuff there. And um, I think also ordering less takeaways is, is um, also good for you because cook, cooking uh, your own food is, I think, ideal in most cases. And last in this, uh, connected to this theme is, uh, well, to the well-being part, is definitely natural cosmetics. And it is because of plastic packaging, uh, as EcoSwitch mentioned earlier, but, but it's also because uh, the harmful chemicals that can be found in the liquid uh, cosmetics, conventional cosmetic, cosmetics products. These chemicals we ingest, uh, we absorb through our skin, um, and then also some of them end up in the water and in the water flow. And um, this is really important. Um, there's so much uh, toxic uh, chemicals around us that we don't really notice in the cleaning products, in the cosmetics, and not to mention the food that, for example, the microplastics in the food that we already talked about. So, sorry, so the uh, solid shampoo bars are an amazing solution. And uh, from my memory, I think there are really a lot of nice uh, stores in Sofia and also online that deliver um, products within the country that also have their own uh, locally made, which I think it's, it's very good. Um, and yeah, this is uh, definitely something interesting to try if you, if you haven't already. And the last uh, category I will be talking about is uh, regenerative life. The, uh, for the term regenerative maybe rings a bell, but if it doesn't, it's a one step uh, further from sustainability. It's not only preserving the resources we have for the future, but also um, adding more and helping uh, this um, pool of resources to grow and supporting for our life. So doing even better than we are doing today. And um, for me, that that has different aspects and some of the most important ones is are the carbon neutrality stewardship and uh, the clothing I use because uh, that's also a big part of, of everyday purchases and as, as consumers. Carbon neutrality is definitely a goal that you can see uh, yeah, major, uh, let's say yeah, international institutions, EU as well, have climate pledges and uh, EU has a goal of being climate neutral by 2050, if I'm not mistaken. And that is still really challenging, but it's possible on the individual level to still, uh, you know, pre give preference to bikes instead of car and cabs. Uh, don't take cab to go to, to a class to walk or take a bike. And also when using air travel, you, using it only when it's necessary. I know there are a lot of international students studying at AVG. Some come from other continents and it's not really possible to, to come with a train. Um, but uh, also uh, looking into which um, air companies have better um, options for better, better fuel, more, more energy efficient fuel is also good. Some also engage in carbon offsetting. So they try to support um, other projects that generate uh, carbon credits. And um, I think also for the, well, for, for the, definitely for the airplane industry, um, air travel industry, it is getting more and more important to cut the carbon emissions because they are also a big, big chunk of the global carbon emissions. And uh, connected to that is, 
in my view, also stewardship and greening the campus uh, spaces and plants is something that definitely can be uh, helpful and also helping you understand and connect with your surroundings, which can um, have multiple benefits for your own sake and also uh, for, um, yeah, just also helping, uh, for example, when in a, a walking in a forest around Lago, you can also help it pick up waste uh, that, it, that can, you can be found there. And uh, having a more a greener campus is a win-win situation because, uh, yeah, there, there are so many studies showing that plants have beneficial effects on us, on study and focus, and also there some purify air. And lastly, uh, fair and toxic-free clothing is uh, super important because it um, helps decrease the microplastics we talked about, but also helps uh, protect our health and support um, livelihoods of those who work in the garment industry. Maybe some of you know that there are a few garment industry factories in Bulgaria and um, not only in Asia countries as mostly people know. And, uh, opting to buy those uh, brands which um, offer fair wages to the workers is really important. That's, um, I think, yeah, the whole garment sector is super carbon intensive. And uh, when the next time, uh, yeah, you go and, and buy a shirt, maybe also think about how much resources went into that. Is it organic? Are people really paid enough that they do this? Because uh, those are some really big, of big issues you know, considering this topic. And with this, I want to end my presentation and, um, and repeat again that sustainability is a process ongoing for all of us. Um, and that, that means that uh, every single step counts from everybody. It's not a competition, it's a neutral teamwork. And yeah, I hope some of this inspired or trigger your um, yeah, thinking tonight. So. Thank you. Thank you to Katarina for this beautiful presentation. And I think that we can all agree that your voice and hopefully also your message got to us. Now, I want to thank to all the speakers for the great presentations, for the useful facts, for the information, and especially for the inspiration that they gave us. Now, I'm going to um, reveal the surprise and I'm going to tell everyone um, who's, who can participate uh, in our giveaway by following the Sustainability Club uh, in Instagram, also EcoSwitch on Instagram. And tomorrow you can see more about the prize. We're going to have two winners. So that's double chances. Um, you're going to see the prize tomorrow uh, on our um, post, again, in Instagram, on, on Facebook as well. And now I announced the discussion round open. So anyone who has uh, any questions, if you're brave enough, you can ask uh, here on Zoom or directly in the chat. Um, before, while you're thinking of your questions, I had a look at our mural and it's looking beautiful. There are so many ideas about um, reusable products such as um, bamboo toothbrushes, we have water bottles, we have following the zero waste philosophy and also what I find very important spreading the message about that. And I think that What's very important here is that for this webinar, everyone can take something um, afterwards as a thought, as um, inspiration. And that's what we give each other here, not only for us as participants, but also for the speakers between each other. We get this inspiration to live a better and more sustainable lifestyle. So now I'm encouraging the people to ask any questions if you have or any comments, anything you would like to share about sustainability. Come on, don't be shy people. I know I have ideas.
because if you don't, I can lovely speak about over that topic for a while because it's uh, um, it's a favorite one for me, and we can always exchange ideas here, especially with inspiring people like the speakers tonight. I think um, it was um, somewhere in the chat. Um... A lady posted uh, a link to a family family cycle circle project. It would be very interesting to hear if she's still on the uh, if she's still with us on the call. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, uh, I'm Vanya, and uh, I'm very happy that you noticed the family circle project. It's um, an educational one for. Uh, the circular economy. So the project uh, is about um, raising awareness by using the family learning model. And uh, we have educational materials for each member of the family. We have comic books for the children between six and 12. They are very nice. There is an issue every month with a um, special topic connected to the specific month, for instance, uh, spring cleaning, we have uh, Christmas presents, we have water shortages in the summer or summer vacation, and uh, climate change, energy efficiency, and so on. So very important topics presented with um, comics for children. So they're very nice, and they're on the website. They're in Bulgarian as well. You, they can print it out and share it with your children or friends. <laughs> Personally, I very I enjoy them very much. <laughs> and um, we also have web quests for, um, for the children between um, young adults, so uh, between um, 13 and 25. These are online challenges uh, where you have um, web resources uh, and uh, specific um, how to say um, quest for for instance uh, imagine that you're a detective and um, you're given the um, you're given the task to find a better solution for the single use plastics and you need to do a research project uh, in a team so um, it's very interactive way to engage the um, the students of course we also have uh, materials for the parents and the idea is um, to have the whole family together, to learn together about circular economy, um, to, um, to discuss, to play. So it's uh, um, freely available on the platform. I shared the link to the website, so check it out and uh, follow us on Facebook. We'll be very, very happy to exchange uh, ideas and to uh, make further use of these very nice materials. And uh, uh, thank you very much for the nice evening. It's uh, great to spend it with uh, like-minded young people. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that as well. Um, if no one has uh, questions to, to the speakers, I might ask the participants and as well, maybe the speakers can share their uh, experience as well um, to what uh, sustainable habits um, they have and maybe to narrow it down more specifically, um, maybe the most meaningful one and perhaps the most difficult one, let's say. If no one from the participant would like, yes, from the speakers as well. Yeah, we're still thinking. Well, yeah, we were kind of thinking about yeah. it. I can share maybe that um, actually my first, uh, uh, so to say, zero waste experience <laughs> and uh, the, the thought of reducing waste uh, was actually to, after a workshop that I've been to uh, for composting at home in a, in a small uh, box, uh, you do your own compost at home. And uh, surprisingly, uh, very fast, I reduced 
my waist so much uh, that, uh, of course, slowly adding recycling away, um, recyclables away and reducing waste. Um, but uh, yeah, this was the most meaningful uh, for me and it does make a big impact. And uh, you can grow your own plants um, and um, uh, how, how do you say it? Um, yeah, um, make a better soil for your home plants as well. <laughs> so this was something for me very, very meaningful. And uh, let me say the second thing I did is um i bought a bag uh actually a set of bags uh from cotton from echo switch <laughs> that was the first company that f i found on the internet um i bought a set of bags uh, from them for vegetables and um, then i stopped that was a year and a half maybe ago and then i stopped um, using those uh, um, plastic bags <laughs> in the shops so that were the two things that i started and i think are making a big impact <laughs> yes yes definitely thank happy you. to hear that <laughs> we've been involved in your first steps in a way what were our first steps i think we also started from from the uh, backs and uh Second one was uh, the stainless steel bottle, water bottle. We carry it around all the time. We're used to uh, going out with a backpack and we always have a bag or a bottle, even a coffee cup inside the, the backpack. So we are always prepared and we uh, deliberately go to places where we know that they're serving coffee in your own uh, cup for example so we never uh, end up uh, <laughs> looking uh, to buy water in glass bottles because this happens a few happened a few times when uh, we forgot our bottle and yeah that's that were maybe the first steps one of the hardest was actually these two toothpaste tablets uh, it's uh, one of many tries to find uh, one which uh, which is uh, uh, pleasant. We've, we've tried pastes in uh, glass glass jars. We've tried um, maybe two or three types of tablets. They weren't as fresh as uh, conventional paste, so we were really trying. And we, I think, we finally found this one, which is uh, fresh enough, <laughs> and as a feeling is uh, nice as regular ones. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that and. Uh, by mentioning that, I was thinking how um, to have a more sustainable lifestyle, sometimes you have to go out of your way. Just like um, you shared the example with the straw, how people are looking at you curio of curiosity, that you have to put in the effort. And for example, as Katerina mentioned, that's, that's a whole journey because uh, it's not a one day thing, neither probably one week thing. It takes a while because um, it's, there are so many changes to be made and some, some of them are easier. For example, as you guys mentioned, the water bottles, that's easy to buy and then stop using the plastic ones. But then there are more difficult ones, for example, when you want to drink your coffee that is made in a coffee shop, then you have to mix a little bit of research where it's, um, you can get it to go in your own mm. cup. Yeah. Can I share something? Mm. Yes, of course. Uh, I think it's uh, kind of interesting and it's again a little bit related to the straw story, not story, but idea that in the bar, when you're in the bar, and it's kind of a statement uh, action. Uh, when I was in 11th or 10th grade in high school, a couple of years ago, uh, my, mm, my friends started, uh, one friend in particular, started using um, a glass bottle, reusable, obviously for water and um, we noticed that she's not using the plastic bottle anymore. We were using plastic bottles every day. We were trying to stay hydrated and yeah, every single day a new water bottle, imagine. And, uh, but we saw that and I don't remember asking questions about it, but it, it happened like there was a transition because 
like a week or two later, you could see that all of us, all of my uh, friends, um, including me, we bought um, reusable bottles or glass bottles and on, on the desks in the classroom, you could see like five or six uh, reusable bottles. And it, it's just really, it's really cool when it starts like something cool, like a trend, you just see it and you like that. And it's in the statement itself without even seeing anything or asking questions. Uh, and that's actually how it started for me with um, reusable bottles and then the tote bags, the clothes bags that I used for shopping. And now I'm trying to implement more uh, reusable products for um, cosmetics and uh, hygiene products in general. Uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a journey and it's interesting. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for sharing that, you know, it's really a cool uh, story because, yeah, actions speak louder than words normally, and uh, we, we like to just spread this message, and it's kind of our goal. We, we've seen it. We actually have this also uh, interesting story of there was this one time we were shopping with our uh, little uh, bags, which is, mesh pack. <laughs> which is a mesh pack, and you put uh, your oranges and fruits and vegetables in it. And the, uh, the woman who was working at the counter at the supermarket told us, oh, well, look at that. That's the, uh, that is the back of the future, really. So yeah. there, like, once you get into that, there are really such cool moments happening here and there. And kind of, it's almost like when you see someone else doing it somewhere, you might not know him, but you kind of can give him a nod or something. Like, it's, it's almost like that. And once you... Mm. Once you get to that point, it's it's really uh, satisfying. And normally, people, I, I we've heard this many times. Like, do you uh, get any issues with this type of uh, uh, products? Like, when you go to the supermarket, are are the people there unfriendly Negative, to yeah. you, not not allowing you to buy products in it? But actually, we, for the past three years, we've never had such. A, um, such an uh, issue or such a situation and we always say that everything is uh, I think that people are already open-minded about it enough and taking these actions as you as you mentioned uh, then have this uh, effect that it, it inspires others and I think that that's what we are kind of all about and what we are trying uh, to do yes well that's amazing thank you and if uh, there are no more questions, I'm going to leave a second. Anyone wants to jump in with a comment or question, something to share? Okay. Okay, so it's my floor then. Um, then I would like to wrap it up here. Um, big thank you to everyone. Before we finish, I just want to say that uh, we have a Google Docs um, form shared in the chat if you want to give us some feedback on the webinar. Good or bad, we will take it. And um, lastly, thank you to all the participants, to all the speakers. I hope that everyone will leave this webinar more inspired to live a more sustainable life. And let's each one of us take a step closer to zero waste and so that we can sustain the planet that we live in so that we can have a better future for ourselves and for our children. I hope that everyone leaves inspired and that's all from me. So good evening. Have a nice evening. Thank yeah. Bye. Thanks have a nice all. Have a nice Thank you everyone. Thank you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.